uh, the internet went out of my shop. So we are doing an impromptu uh, live show today. I'm here with Rob and we're getting set up because we had everything set up before. But now we're trying to figure out how to reset a little bit here. Just so we can have our live show. Dun, 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 dun. So I know some of you might be waiting on a different live location because we had it set up as a live feed coming on October 30, uh, 20, 30, wait, what is today, 23rd? 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. And yet here we are, and the only way I could figure out how to do it on my phone was just to go live. So hopefully you guys will find us uh, today, and hopefully you can hear us. If you can't hear us, uh, let us know. <laughs> All right, bring, bring it on in over here a little bit. Let me go get a little bit more light. Hello, what's up everybody? <laughs> Do or die, we're going to go live today. Do you, do you have your phone? Yep. Uh, you could go on your phone to see if there's comments that come up. Okay. That might be helpful. All right. Do I see anybody there yet? All right. Two people watching, I think. <laughs> come on. This is YouTube, right? Yeah. If you can look up Dave's Island Instruments and then find the live feed. going very slow too. Are you logged into our Wi-Fi at all? Or? I don't think so. Oh, here we are, live. Woohoo! There oh. we are! All right. Cool. So Rob's got his phone. Yeah. And you can maybe just put it on the stand right there. So you can see if anybody logs in. And it does say waiting for DII. Um, oh, is that the, that's the one that's waiting. So we went live without that one. So it should, like if you just go to DII. Okay. Oops. It'll just be us right there. There, there it is. Go. That's cool. the one. I click on us. Cool. Oh, one more thing. All right, everybody. We are getting situated here because our uh, our uh, our Wi-Fi went out. So we are doing a live show, impromptu, with my phone. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. Here we are. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody to the DII Impromptu live show with no Wi-Fi. So we're doing this data from uh, my phone. Um, I'm here with Rob Gilmet today. What's up, everybody? And we're going to be talking about some handpan stuff uh, and specifically about 432 hertz tuning for handpans. Um, first of all, I'm David Beery. I'm the owner here at Dave's Island Instruments. We're located in Lakewood, California. And uh, I make and tune st steel drums and hand pans, and I've been doing it um, for a long time. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I believe it's, I'm not sure which way you're seeing this, but below the screen here, uh, either on the left and right, the little red subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. It'd be great to have you as a subscriber. All right. Somebody said something. Is somebody on it? Hey. Let's go. All right, let's go. <laughs> we will. Um, all right, and then we've got the um, website, davesislandinstruments.com. Uh, go check us out at davesislandinstruments.com for all sorts of information about the handpans we sell and uh, accessories and that sort of thing. Um, also, we've got handpan lessons. Uh, if you go to the website and go to the services tab, uh, you can find our online lessons. So if you're interested in handpans and interested in learning how to play the handpans, uh, you can go to that uh, spot and uh, sign up for lessons. It's like a little monthly subscription thing and uh, learn all about hand pans. So that's it, that's my little sales pitch right there. Cool. Um, this is Rob Gilmet, I'm David Beery. Um, we're gonna be talking today, uh, again, about hand pans and 432 hertz tuning. A lot of people have questions about that. Uh, if you have any questions yourself or have any comments, please put them in the comments screen. Uh, we would love to hear what you have to offer or what your questions are. Um, and we can hopefully answer them live today while we're alive. And we've got another camera over here, so we can kind of see those questions coming up. And we can just interact with you that way. Um, all right, so Rob, um, I've known you for a little while, but I haven't really gotten to know you like super duper good yet. So tell me a little bit about uh, your history with uh, sound 
Yeah. Healing, yeah. yoga, yeah. all that whole spectrum of things. Uh, how you got involved with it and uh, maybe where you're going with it. For sure. All right. So my name's Rob. Um, I've been playing music most of my life. Um, I got my first guitar when I was 10 years old from my dad, and I've just stuck with it ever since. I've been in many different kinds of bands and, um, yeah, I've played many instruments. Guitar primarily, but percussion and wind instruments too. When I was about 19, I started getting into yoga and meditation. So I, I really immersed myself into that and I became a yoga teacher. And music was always a part of it. I would put music in my classes for sure. I would curate playlists. And I even got involved playing live music for yoga classes. So that was something I just loved doing. It was fusing, you know, my passions. So I, um, I would do that. And that was actually the first time I saw a handpan. Okay. Ozzy Mayer actually had one of his tune by you, he told oh, me. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ozzy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so he had a handpan, and um, I was like, oh, my God, this is just like droplets of color. Like, that's <laughs> totally. how they sound to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I've always had a dream to get one, and yesterday I got one, and it's, it's right here. <laughs> so right so that's, back. go for it. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much like where my trajectory with yoga and music came. Yoga is my primary thing. I teach a full-time um, beginner breath-centered yoga, meditation, um, different. I work with one-on-one, -on -one, but I also do groups. So uh, sound healing is the thing I've been up to lately, and that's really creating a space using sounds for people to relax into and to access deeper states of meditation. So that's where I'm at and where I'm going with it, um, fusing the yoga and the, and the sound. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. I was sweating yeah. bullets, so I had to go get a tissue. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Setting up all this equipment, like, last minute. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. Anyway, so thank you for that. That's really cool. I was, like, half present. I apologize. And you know what I really need right now? Some of your healing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Some of your meditation. We'll do a meditation. Yeah. Exactly. No, that'd be great. Yeah. All right. So we were talking earlier. You know, obviously, you've been wanting to get a handpan uh, for a while now. Mm -hmm. And we've been lucky enough to have you as, as a customer for mm -hmm. a while. Uh, Rob rented a handpan from us. I don't know if anybody out there knows that we rent handpans here. Um, he rented one from us uh, for a little while, and he was really getting into it. And so uh, then he's gotten his own here. Mm -hmm. And this is a great has a great kind of story. I mean, he talked to me a little bit about 432 hertz tuning early on, um, and we'll get into exactly what we're talking about in a second here. Um, but then another customer uh, had me tune one to 432, and I was planning on tuning his to 440 hertz. Uh, but I just forgot to reset the calibration on my tuner, so I tuned it to 432. And then I was like, you know what, I think he was interested in that. So I called him up, sent him a text or whatever. I'm like, hey, you want to check it out? And he's like, sure. Mm -hmm. So that's how we ended up with the 432, and I think it actually worked out perfectly. It worked perfectly. out perfectly, yeah. yeah. Initially, I asked for it, and then I was thinking about it, like it might be hard to work with other instruments. Like the 432 is different from most standard tunings. So I was like, you know, just do the standard, and if I'm ever playing with other instruments, you know, then I'll just, I'll be you know, tuned to that. But it was like an accident that I got tuned to 432. And I have a couple of flutes that are tuned to 432 and it's a happy accident. It's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, like, it vibes so well. The stars aligned. Yeah. yeah it was really, it was really yeah. fortunate. So I'm glad it worked out this way actually. So, um, all right, so let's just talk a little bit about 432 hertz tuning. So for anybody out there that doesn't really understand what we're talking about when we say 432 hertz, um, musical instruments are tuned, uh, to basically matching vibrations. Let's just put it like that. So uh, when a musical instrument uh, plays a song, or no, not a song, but a, a pitch, uh, that pitch has vibrations to it, right? And so uh, every second that goes by, there's a certain amount of vibrations that occur within that period of time. And so uh, most Western instruments these days are tuned to 440 vibrations, basically, per second, I believe it is. Um, and we usually say A, so there's a certain A note on the instruments that uh, we just stipulate as being the common tone that everybody refers to. So we call it A440. So again, that's 440 whatever oscillations or whatever during that second uh, that create that pitch. Um, so now if you took that same duration of time and you, instead of having 440 oscillations, you have 432, you're going you're gonna to notice that it's going to have slightly a slower amount of oscillations. The, the, like the peaks and the valleys of those oscillations, they're going to be a little bit farther apart. And so it makes the pitch go flatter, just slightly flat. The way we perceive it makes it go lower. So um, 
when we're talking about 432 hertz tuning versus 440 hertz tuning, what we're really talking about is the difference between uh, 440 being here and 432 kind of being just slightly lower in pitch than the 440 hertz. So uh, a lot of people have uh, interesting uh, ideas of what that means, uh, how it developed. I mean, the Western music kind of developed, I think, over a period of time, like they've shifted over the years. I know back in the old days, I think the standard was like 438, and then it went up to 440, and then I think even countries like uh, Japan, uh, their standard is 442. So there's just different, different cultures and different people tune instruments differently. Uh, and so it's not like all musical instruments are made the same worldwide. People have different uh, ways of tuning these instruments and making them like the normal pattern or the normal uh, uh, tuning. So um, with that being said, um, there's some people have a kind of a little bit of a spirituality um, aspect that they, they have beliefs in with the 432. Uh, there's some scientific stuff that we were talking about the other day yeah. uh, that I would like to have you maybe talk about a little bit. Sure. Um, and then there's just the practicality of it, and, and I'm, I'm better a little bit with the practicality mm -hmm. of, of the tuning. So the practicality of it all is um, when you have a 432 instrument, um, you, you can play with other instruments, but it's always going to sound a little bit uh, out of tune, just a little bit. And so like, let's say you walk up to a buddy or a family member and say, hey, let's play with your piano. Uh, it might not sound in tune with that piano, and they might say, something's wrong with your drum, something's wrong with your hand pan. But there's nothing wrong with it. It was just tuned to 432 for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing f for a practical reason. You just have to be aware that your hand pan not, might not match other instruments. So you kind of need to be aware of how those other instruments are tuned in order for it to work with your hand pan. So yeah, go ahead and tell me a little bit about your history with 432 and the way you've been, uh, it's been presented to you. Yeah, so 432, um, just like you're saying, it's, it's a slightly flat of the standard tuning. And there's a lot of different schools of thought on it. I mean, I've heard things like um, there's conspiracies, like 440 was supposed to help like herd the sheep of people, like it was supposed to be like a, like a control thing. And I don't particularly believe that, but I, there's a lot of stuff online about that. 432 is said to have been the frequency of the earth, the frequency of bees buzzing, so like mm. elements of nature are in line with that 432. So people um, find that there's interesting benefits of that, and I appreciate it. I, I like that idea. The reason I chose 432 is because what I'm using it for is work with sound, and like sound healing, sound meditations for people. So if I'm doing an, an event or an, or an experience for someone, more likely than not, it'll just be the hand pan that I'm playing at any given time, or if I'm using something else, it will be tuned to 432. And if there are any special benefits of that, then, then we'll get them. As far as the 440 goes, um, I, I was presented like this. A guy said, he was like, think about any of your favorite songs, oldies, mm -hmm. jazz music, classical music. More likely than not, it was tuned to 440. Mm -hmm. Did it harm you? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Um, and I think of all music, really, it has, has the potential for being sound healing. It's like um, if it uplifts you, then, then it's doing something good for your overall well-being. But um, 432, to me, is just very interesting. Um, you know, and, I, and I, I like to explore that. So I'm kind of new and experimenting with it, but so far I like it, and mm -hmm. it's been working for me. Yeah, in, yeah. in past uh, conversations I've had with other people that are in the industry of uh, yoga, meditation, that sort of thing, uh, we've tried to always explain it to each other, and, and no one ever really knows how to uh, like, uh, introduce like, the way they feel when they hear a handpan that's in 432, or the way it uh, affects them. And the way I kind of explain it on my end is, I, I think it's just I'm so... Um, accustomed to tuning instruments that are 440 that I don't really notice it too much. Like if you just walked up to me out of the blue and just started, started playing a 432 instrument, uh, I might uh, notice a little bit, but it's not something that I would, it would immediately say, oh, that's 432. It just, what it does to me is it just kind of makes me kind of go, huh. <laughs> that's really what it does. It just kind of makes my head kind of turn to the side and go, there's something different. Like, but I can't quite put my finger on it. And to some degree, I think that what might be what people are looking for mm. when they get like a 432 experience is that it just changes the way you feel. Mm -hmm. and, and I really, I, I, I know it's really hard to explain. And I, I get it. What you said right there, it's kind of like brings more consciousness to the moment. It's like, oh, you, you have to kind of pay attention a little more. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. So it's just fascinating. And that's been my experience. So um, 
we're lucky enough to have a couple instruments right now in front of us. Uh, this is Rob's 432 instrument, and this is an instrument I have here. This is an Aris hand pan and made of stainless steel. By the way, Rob's is a, a clarity. It's a powder coated clarity made of plain steel, but um, they have very similar tuning. So they, these are both we call sunset um, tunings uh, out in the hand pan world. A lot of people call it Celtic minor. So essentially they're D minor hand pans. And the, the tuning diagram for these instruments is exactly the same. So the, the ding note, they're both D, considered D, and then it goes A, C, D, E, F, G, A, and then C on the top. So they're both identical with the exception of the tuning. Mm -hmm. So this is 4032 and this is 440. So uh, I just want to kind of show you uh, what a 440 instrument sounds like just so your ear hears it. And then I'm gonna have Rob play his and he can kind of get an idea of what the contrast is and if you can hear it or not hear it. And then what we can do after we have them played separately is we're gonna play them together and maybe you'll see if there's a little rub or if you notice the rub or if you don't rub, notice the rub. So uh, was anybody having a comment? I think I saw somebody. It says, welcome all. That was you. Oh, that yeah. was me? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so I'm gonna play the 440 instrument right now and um, just get, give you an idea of what the 440 sounds like. One more time. All right, and Rob. Subtle, right? I mean, for it all sounds almost the same. Exactly, yeah. sounds almost the same. Uh, I did. I think I saw a real comment this time. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, Shane from Oregon. What's up, Shane? Hey, Shane. Gonna chill with you for a bit and see if I can learn some new techniques. All right. Right Thank on. You, yeah. Shane. So we're talking about 432 hertz today. We're not going into too much technique stuff, but we'll talk a little bit about that maybe towards the end. Sure. Um, so yeah, if anybody else has any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comment section. We're trying to monitor those right now because it really makes it fun when we can interact with you guys out there on this live format. Totally. Makes it more fun for us, really. Totally, you know? yeah. And so and more interactive for you guys. So, All right, so that's uh, the sample that you guys just had just then is this is the 440 hand pan tuned to D minor, and this is the 432 hertz that was uh, tuned to D minor also. So let's just do another quick one. I'm just going to go straight up. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you go straight up. So it's a little bit faster transition between the two. Let's cool. give that a shot. Yeah, so it's just a little, little different. So now this time, let's try playing together. Okay. Just to give it an idea. So we'll, we'll go slow. We'll go like one, two, three, that kind of thing. Cool. Ready? Yeah. It almost sounds like, <laughs> like something from Bali. Uh, you know what I mean? I like, can hear that. Yeah. 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 What is that kind of uh, those instruments that they have down there? Balinese. Uh, I'll, I'll think of it in a sure. minute. But yeah. yeah. So tell me what your impression was of that. I, I really sensed um, the dissonance because the notes are so close together that you get like like a, a little bit more of a wobble feel to it. Yeah. Um, and that's there's some schools of thought like in the binaural beats. Um, there's benefit to that when you have frequencies that are very close together it produces a third wave, and um, whatever that does, it's almost, in sound healing, it's almost cathartic, like it's um, uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but it helps to bring stuff up and out. So I think that's one of the benefits of binaural, which is this is pretty, pretty similar, or if not the same, that real close frequency. Yeah, let's do that one more time. Go for it. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, Balinese gamelan music. Gamelan is the kind of style of uh, music and instruments that I was thinking about, and it's got a kind of like a little twingy kind of sound to it like that for us Westerners. Totally. Yeah. All right, let's try that one more time. That was pretty cool, actually. Okay, go for it. Oh, oh shit, I missed that. Go for okay. it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I actually kind of, it's kind of interesting if you're, if you're not expecting it to be in tune and you don't have these expectations of like perfect, you know, perfect, uh, uh, what symbiotic relationship between the instruments? Yeah. If you just allow it to be what it is. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we got. Let's I think see. we got something else. Somebody here. said something. 
When I listen to the drums, what comes to mind is a church versus a temple. Wow. Church versus oh, okay, interesting. So yeah. are you talking, uh, I don't know if you can reply back, uh, but um, are you suggesting one versus the other, like this is a church and this is a temple? Or are you talking about just in general, just the hand pans are church and temple? Anyway, if you reply, we can maybe get a little more clarity on that. But th thank you. That was awesome. That was really fascinating. That was Victoria. Comment. Thanks, Victoria. Yeah. Oh, Victoria, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. So now let's just kind of, let's play um, together, okay. like as if we're jamming just a little bit. Okay. Just to kind of give another idea of like how it would sound together. Sure. All right. So let's, I'm just going to come up. Go I'll, for I'll it. do like a little bass line thing and you can kind of fiddle that. Sure. All right. Sounds fun. <laughs> I mean, uh, our little arrangement there, I like that was pretty cool. We all yeah. ended at the same time and everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's a really uh, interesting sound. I don't know, how, what, now, now what do you feel about it, like after we played a, a song versus mm -hmm. just playing the scale? Yeah, I, honestly, I want it in tune. Like I feel, right. the musician in me is like, it's a little flat and I just, I just hear it, you know? Yeah, right. But um, it is interesting and I don't know what it's doing, you know, on a consciousness level, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of find it fascinating because when we were playing the notes together, yeah. it gave me, um, I think, kind of like maybe what the person was talking about, like the, the temple feel okay. versus the church feel. Like the church might be like totally perfect and like da -da 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 square or whatever. And then the temple feel, like maybe you're thinking of some other culture somewhere that's uh, a little rough around the edges or something like that. And that kind of has that kind of esqueness to it. Um, mm. It's just a little edgy, mm -hmm. but there was something about it too that just kind of is attractive somehow. And if you just let it be what it is, mm -hmm. right? But then as soon as you start jamming, yeah. then it kind of changes it. You're kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> can we play together? Yeah. So I don't know, maybe it's just different techniques would uh, give you different opportunities for different results. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think somebody replied, by Let's the way. See, Victoria. No, the sound Dave is producing has a resonance found in a church, mm. and the other drum invokes more of a temple drum sound. Got it, yeah. Yeah, the tone. Okay. Right, right, and I think that's because, um, I think it's because we're commonly listening to 440 music. It just sounds normal mm. to us, yeah. right? That's the normal one. So whereas the temple might be the one that's like a little different, like when you go to Indonesia and you're or something like that, yeah. and all of a sudden something's different over there. You know what else? Um, I th if I'm not mistaken, John Lennon had his piano tuned 432 for the song Imagine. No, -uh, really. Yeah. And I think that was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, yeah, huh. and, and he did it for whatever auspicious reason he did. Wow, I gotta yeah. check that one out. Yeah. That would be fascinating if it was tuned yeah. to 432. So, okay, well, um, let's see, what else is on our list? We've got our little list of things to talk about. Is any, if anybody else has any questions about 432, throw them at us. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be great to get your perspective or your comments and questions. Um, but, uh, oh, it's covering, what does it say, thoughts on hand the tuning? Oh, you know what I'd say about sound healing? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for, and about hand pan and sound healing. One of the reasons I like it for that is because the way the instrument is, it, um, it has more than one tone at a time. Right, like right. the resonance, you hear like the layers of sounds. And I've seen research on this that shows the way it affects your brain waves mm. and overtone music. That's the word I was looking for, like, oh, yeah, like yeah, a okay. gong mm -hmm. or a Tibetan bowl does it really well. But these do too. And what it does is it just, it does something to the brain. It hears all these different layers of sound and it helps lower you to different brain waves, mm -hmm. which are more like meditation or right. flow states. And people that have a difficult time meditating, listening to um, overtone music, like a handpan or a gong, it helps them access those mental states almost 
not, like w without having to do anything, right. just relaxing into the sound. Um, hand pan's a wonderful way to use it. So I think that's the only thing I wanted to say about that, about the, um, the sound healing and overtones. And that's why hand pans works for it. I love that because, yeah. I mean, a lot of people out there don't really know that hand pans are, are made with basically three different pitches that are tuned. And then beyond that, there's a lot of pitches that are like floating around that are really high frequencies that are not always frequently uh, tuned or, or like, uh, basically there's three that are tuned as tuners would tune them. And beyond that, there's a couple that some people might mess with, but sometimes they're frequently just slightly just shimmering out there just a little bit. And so, you know, Playing that just as a note, we, we typically just hear just that note. But really, your brain is interpreting all three, if not more, of those. Yeah. So I could see what you're saying. And there was a guy, I can't think of his name right now, but he had a presentation and um, he showed the brain waves. And just listening to this gong sound or listening to a, any overtone instrument, it does something to the brain where it just like levels out. And if someone's not listening to the music before, like in the experiment, you see all this brain activity, mm. so much is processing going on. And he just like wiped it out with sound. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That is super cool. So uh, I think somebody made another comment. Let's see. All right. Victoria said, the note together sounds good, melodic, but when different notes are played together, there is a slight hitch. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then looks like, who is that? Susan. I'm an absolute beginner and wonder if I should tap the divots rather than the flat area? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's just like practical. Can you show me contact, where like where to make contact? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So this is, we're drifting away from the 432 discussion right here, which is totally fine. There's a yeah. hand pan class, so people can ask uh, questions about hand pans all they like, so just bring them at us. Uh, but yeah, so if you're a beginner and you're learning how to uh, play the instrument, uh, you're gonna notice that there's some people that teach one way versus another way. Um, I'm going to show you my way of how I get the sound out of the instrument that I like. And basically, if you can see it here, uh, this note right here, uh, you called it a divot in the comment. Uh, most people call these dimples in the, in the community of handpan players and makers. So that dimple right there, uh, to some degree, yes, when I play with a flat stroke like this, you can see my finger is kind of flat. I do pretty much aim for that dimple. Now, hand pans are not all made alike, and so some dimples are really deep, some dimples are shallow. Uh, mine are kind of like a medium depth. And so my finger fits nice and gently and perfectly into that uh, dimple, and it seems to create a nice tone. Uh, I've noticed other hand pans where the dimple is deeper. Sometimes it doesn't always work as well, so you might want to touch like the edge of where the dimple is. Um, there's other techniques where, like, this is kind of like I said, it's a flat hit to get the pitch. So my finger kind of comes down like a spring, just hits it and comes immediately off of the hand pan note. And by the way, I'm doing this, I'm over exaggerating right now. I'm lifting my hand afterwards. Really when I play it, it just looks like this. So you can kind of see what I'm basically doing is I'm slapping the drum and my finger kind of bounces up and just does, uh, does not stay on the note. If it stays on the note, then it mutes it like this. You don't want it to get muted. So another technique some people like is they use their thumbs. Sometimes for some reason that's a more comfortable position or action for them to play the notes with. You'll notice it gets a slightly different sound out of the notes versus. And then some people will use the tip of their finger um, and that gets a nice really um, kind of a more delicate sound um, out of the instrument. So. Ultimately, uh, I usually teach the flat finger technique uh, initially, but beyond that, as you grow as a performer and as a player, uh, you can learn how to use all of your fingers in different ways to create different sounds. So really, it's up to what kind of sound do you want to produce. Uh, so once you get your normal sound, like your general sound, mm -hmm. it's all good, then you can play. Uh, but beyond that, then if you want to have like a soft sound or a more harsh sound or a loud sound, uh, then you can kind of change your technique to fulfill the needs that you have of the way you want to perform. So. Excellent question. Those are always good questions. I like the beginner questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I think I, I think I saw another question or two. Let's see. Someone um, looks like Jason. It's like I agree. I can get emotional with the sounds. Like just feeling the sounds. That was Jason. Thank you, Jay. Yeah. Um, and then Jimmy said, Dave, your hand pan seems to have a warmer tone in comparison. Oh, over here. Yeah. I mean, it might just be because the steels are different steels. Um, 
And so it's always kind of hard. Every hand fan's a little bit different. Even if I made another one like this, uh, you could compare those and they might have uh, slightly different sounds. Uh, typically, uh, a uh, um, stainless steel instrument like this has a little bit more sustain, sustains a little bit longer duration. Uh, the powder coated tends to have a little bit of a warm sound, and, but the sustain might be a little bit less. Um, but it has everything to do with like what the customer wants, what they're feeling about it. Uh, so everybody uh, embraces and, and hears hand pans slightly differently. It's almost exactly like guitars. Mm -hmm. So if you're familiar with guitars at all, some guitars have a spruce top, some guitars have a mahogany top, some guitars have some other kind of uh, wood that they're made out of. And each one of those uh, stylists or those changes in, um, of wood uh, changes the character of the sound of the instrument. It's still a guitar and it still is in tune, but it just sounds a little bit different. And so um, that's probably one, one reason you're hearing some differences on, on, uh, on the screen right now too. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, well, I know that you also play native flutes. That's what I do, yeah. Yeah, native so, flute. so Rob has uh, locally some, uh, you do yoga classes, and mm -hmm. uh, what was the other term that you used? Uh, sound meditation. Sound meditation. Yeah. So he does sound meditation and yoga classes here locally. Uh, I've not attended one yet, so I kind of want to find out just right now, like give sure. us a little lowdown of what you would do with flutes, first of all, and then what you intend to do with the handpan. Sure. So I'll, let me just pull one out here. Okay. This is a this is a Native American flute. Um, this is in the key of D minor. So it would and it's 440 tuning. So it would vibe with that one. Yeah. And this is made by a guy named Guillermo Martinez. He's here in Orange County. We've been doing indigenous instruments for 40 years, and they're just beautiful instruments. In this tradition, the flute was used as a prayer or an offering. So if I'm say working in a group setting or like it's the end of yoga class and people are lying down, I will do some sort of just inner stuff and I'll think um, healing, I'll think a prayer or something, whatever's relevant to the group in that class. And as I'm playing that, I'm just sort of channeling that energy through the sound and I'll play something generally soothing that's appropriate for final relaxation kind of stuff. And uh, that's what I do in yoga classes. Mm -hmm. So I have a, another flute um, that we'll bust out in a minute that's tuned to 432 and I wanted to do some looping for sound baths to like maybe loop hand pan or loop the flute and then play the other instrument with it. And I think that will be what, like a really cool combo. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Uh, let's do like a little sample of these two instruments together. That'll be great. Because you said that's D minor, right? D minor. Okay. Yeah. So I'll play a little D on the hand pan. You play D there. Mm -hmm. And we'll do a little comparison in a few minutes of like the difference between those sounds. Cool. Yeah, right on. Okay. Pan and the native flute are like yeah, that's clean. They went really oh, well together. Super nice. And that sounds yeah. great too. It's a nice. Yeah. Now, another reason I like that flute uh, with the hand pan is this definitely has a warm, like a bassy sound, mm -hmm. and it definitely has a, a melodic sound. On so it's on very on top mm -hmm. uh, of the of the bass sound that the hand pan. So it's a nice separation. It's totally. And the percussive yeah. side. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. This has a percussion side mm -hmm. that has more of the wavy melodic side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said something. All right. Said, Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for watching, guys. And yeah. I know that uh, getting started today was a little bit weird because our Wi-Fi went out here at the store, and yeah. so we had to just... We're using my, my iPhone right now, <laughs> which is all good. And we're still getting the content, right? This is great. It works. Yeah. yeah, so thank you again for tuning in, and thanks for being really good with the comments and questions. It really makes it entertaining for everybody. All right, so uh, that was the 440 tuning. So there was a D minor 440 hand pan and a D minor 440 flute. Mm -hmm. uh, now, do you want to try the 440... Flute for 32 flute. Let's with do a this one. We'll okay, we'll jump right to here. All we'll right. go 432 and right. uh, go ahead and play this one. Okay, we can swap out. Come. Yeah. Okay. And this one is a uh, tail to walk in flute, same maker, Guillermo. And this one is a double flute. So if you notice, there's two different um, chambers there, or two different like barrels, you could say. And there's two on this side too, so it's um, it's a D on one side and an A on the other side, and they just they're perfect fifths. Each note harmonizes very well with each other. 432 is going to vibe perfect with that one. Um, this is actually a really ancient instrument. They mm. this was found initially made of clay, 
around, um, I think, 300 to 700 AD, Aztec and the, the Teotihuacan pyramids in Mexico, they had these kind of flutes as temple flutes. So they were sacred instruments, um, they were used in ceremony, and we, you know, just to the degree that we can, try to carry that forward when we use them um, working with people. Wow. Yeah, it's awesome. It is pretty cool. I'm going to do basically the same little bass line. You can just uh, jam over it. Cool. No, it's a <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, it's great. It was fun playing with you, by the way. Totally. Yeah, very Doing nice likewise. and easy to interpret. So. Yeah. All right, so there you go. Those were two, 40, uh, two instruments uh, tuned to 432 hertz playing together. And you can see it worked. Uh, the other two instruments worked. These instruments worked. Can we do like a contrast now, like of maybe the, um, the 440 Flute. D minor with the 432? Sure, yeah. So here's another example. So let's say you're playing a 432 hand pan but the person uh, that came to class with you has a 440 flute. Let's just see what happens here. Okay. Interesting. You know what I noticed about that that's kind of fascinating is since this instrument is higher in, in uh, range uh, and this is lower, this comes to mind because I didn't really notice too much of mm -hmm. a rub. Yeah. So uh, in orchestral tuning, sometimes they'll tune uh, the vibraphones, the mellophone, and uh, the uh, vibraphones, the marimbas, and the xylophones to 442, and everybody else tunes to 440. And why do they do that? And like the glockenspiels and that sort of thing. They do that so it kind of cuts above and it kind of projects above the rest of the instruments rather than getting absorbed by the other instruments. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fascinating. Just now as we were playing this, I'm like, you know what? That, did, that didn't sound quote unquote out of tune It didn't to sound me. bad, yeah. 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 Uh, let's try the opposite. So let's try the, the lower one okay. with my 440 hand pan. I just want to see what that sounds like. This is fun, by the way, because we're, we're like totally in the experimental zone right um, now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we're presenting this to you, but we're also just kind of playing around with it also. All right, let's see how this sounds.
yeah, so that one, I heard a little bit more of the fluttering of the, the notes kind of uh, interacting with each other. And especially the lowest, the last note mm -hmm. didn't quite match. The lower note on that one was a little lower than this one. What, what did you think? I agree. I think because they're closer in um, pitch, yeah. that's it. you're going to notice the contrast more. Yeah. Fascinating. It's <laughs> yeah. so much fun, you guys. Yeah. I'm glad we do this. Okay. Um, so those are some comparisons we had. Does anybody, oh, I don't know if anybody had any yeah, final comments. Um, said, the hitch, not as noticeable. Yeah. And then more hitch. Yeah. So Victoria's noticing the same thing we are too. Yeah. She also said it was beautiful the one before. Oh, Fred Romero's here. What's up, Fred? That uh, right brought on. tears to my eyes on full, clean, full on cleansing. That's awesome. Awesome, man. That's Glad so to cool. hear it. Yeah, yeah, that's terrific. All right. Well, cool. So we've um, we've talked about this. I, I I really just wanted to present this to you, kind of as a simple class today. I know that we didn't really go into full on like what the parts of the hand pan are or how to play and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I, you know, I just really wanted to get Rob in here to discuss this because yesterday when we uh, were talking about his hand pan and the 432 hertz and everything, I was like, oh, this is a perfect topic because a lot of people have questions about 432 hertz when they come in and, uh, and inquire about hand pans. So I know it's a hot topic and a lot, a lot of people have questions about it. There's a lot of mysteries about it still, mm -hmm. even after we discussed it right now. There, oh, that was one thing. Uh, there was a little scientific thing that you, I think, I can't remember you told people out there. It was about the, the water. water. Yeah, the okay. water thing. So um, they did these experiments with just a single drone sound. One was 432, one was 440. And you could look it up on YouTube. The 440 was just, um, it, it just kind of looked random, like nothing specific, didn't look bad. So the anything. vibrations of the water. Yeah, the vibrations of the water. You could see the ripples. It was just like kind of random, chaotic. But the 432 started to produce like geometric patterns. And if you think of the human body being however much percent water, um, what effect would that have on us? And I don't know, but I think it's interesting to explore that. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, that was the thing I had yeah. saw on that. I, I think main consideration for people out there, if you're thinking of buying an instrument, um, what are you going to use it for? Are you going to play with other instruments? In which case, the 440 is probably going to be more compatible. 432 is more esoteric. And if you want to go that way, you can get your instruments tuned all like that. You could easily drop tune the guitar to 432. Yeah. But things like that, um, you know, you decide what's going to work best for you. Yeah, really, yeah. There's, only, there's only a few people um, that uh, purchase 432 instruments from us, and it's only once in a while. Uh, so most people are looking for something that they can play with friends or family with, or even if they're playing by themselves, they want to play with a radio or, or something that's on YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a 432 instrument, sometimes it makes it a little bit more difficult. But again, like you were saying, so if, if it all just kind of depends on the purpose that you're planning to use the hand pan for. Uh, and if it's for you, it's for you. Um, yeah. So there you go. Um, I guess if you have any final questions, we can kind of just watch them come in here. Mm -hmm. um, but I just want to say thanks to Rob so much for doing this. It was Thank totally you. last minute. I said, hey, would you like to come on live with me? He's like, sure, thumbs up. And yeah. you're really great on live, by the way. You're oh, thanks. thanks. <laughs> Good at talking. And cool. um, By the way, you can find Rob on Instagram. He's at, the little at symbol, Rob, R-O-B, Don, D-O-N, Yoga, Y-O-G-A. So at Rob Don Yoga. Uh, you can find him on Instagram. He's right there waiting for you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're local to Long Beach and that sort of thing, keep a you know keep an eye on him too because he has these yeah. yoga events and that sort of thing. I do a virtual class Monday and Wednesday night at 6:30. Um, yoga class, beginner friendly always, and we do a little bit of sound usually at the end. So if you're interested in that, just hit me up on on um, the Instagram. You can send me a message, and uh, yeah, I'll get you the link for that. Awesome. Yeah. So I think we're going to play a little bit of something. And then unfortunately, since I'm here all by myself, I'm just going to have to wander over to the screen and turn it off. And it's going to look really goofy, but cool. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you want to play? You want to play 432 or 440? I actually kind of like the, the high D over this one. Okay, let's, let's do, do it. Yeah. yeah.
Right on, man. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Absolutely. This is a pleasure. Thank you, All right, everybody. everybody. We're going to make the awkward farewell now. I'm going to push the little end button. But thank you for tuning in. I'm really glad you found us today because, again, uh, if you didn't know that we had some troubles up front because our Wi-Fi went out here. Uh, and so we had to just connect through data. So here we are going doing the data through the iPhone, and it worked fabulously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right on. All right, everybody out there, have a great day. Um, if you have any questions for us, feel free to contact us, davesislandinstruments.com. And, again, uh, Rob's on uh, Instagram, at robdonyoga.com. Check him out. All right, everybody. Thank you. Absolutely. Later.